Entergy is proud to support programming on LPB and greener practices that preserve Louisiana. The goal of our environmental and sustainability initiatives really is to ensure that our kids and future generations can be left with a cleaner planet. Additional support provided by the Fred B. and Ruth B. Ziegler Foundation and the Ziegler Art Museum located in Jennings City Hall. The museum focuses on emerging Louisiana artists and is an historical and cultural center for Southwest Louisiana. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting with support from viewers like you. definitely something unusual happening right now. Climate experts react to the strike by a powerhouse tornado. We have great crew bases. We have a great support network here. Some firsts for Hollywood South as it solidifies its footing. Yeah, I think a hero is someone who makes the most out of a bad situation. Introducing you to our first Young Hero of 2022. Hi everyone, I'm Kara St. Cyr. Andre has the night off tonight. Many in the New Orleans area woke up to destroyed homes and damaged neighborhoods on Wednesday morning after a tornado touched down, leaving one man dead. Most of the damage was confined to the Araby, St. Bernard, St. Tammany, and New Orleans East area. The National Weather Service confirmed that the tornado in Araby was an EF3 with winds of 160 miles per hour. The path was reported to be 11 miles long. New Orleans East hasn't seen a tornado since 2017. Governor John Bell Edwards took a tour of the area's hit hardest. He asked everyone with damage to report it to damage.la.gov. It's not clear how much assistance can be given at this time. We'll have much more on that tornado strike in just a moment from Andre. And now to news making headlines across the state. Vice President Kamala Harris made her visit this week to the town of Sunset in St. Landry Parish and talked up the plan of the bipartisan infrastructure law to expand broadband access to everyone. Every household in America should be able to access and afford, I separate those two points, access and afford, because you need both. You need to lay down the fiber, but you also need to be able to pay for it and afford it. So these both are priorities for our administration. A 33-year-old Baton Rouge man could spend most of the rest of his life behind bars after scheming and almost pulling off a plan to make him rich. A federal jury convicted Elliot Sterling of funneling financial aid meant for students and small business loans into his own personal bank accounts. Evidence found he got almost $1.5 million in student aid loans associated with 180 Baton Rouge Community College students. People living in FEMA mobile homes following the hurricanes of 2020 will soon have to start paying rent. About 1,750 such mobile homes are in use. FEMA extended deadlines, but now that time is up, and it means households displaced by Hurricane Laura will pay rent starting April 1st and Hurricane Delta May 1st. More than a half year after Hurricane Ida pummeled southeast Louisiana, and especially Grand Isle, the Grand Isle School has reopened. The school teaches students from kindergarten through high school. On return day, 64 of the school's 135 students were in attendance. When food or culture is being raided, that's a place where Louisiana can hang its hat, and once again, more culinary kudos for New Orleans. This year's Best Cities for Brunch has the Crescent City ranked number two behind New York and ahead of Chicago. And when you throw in cocktails, then New Orleans is number one for brunch quality. A historic Louisiana state featured in this newscast in 2019 has sold for two and a half million dollars. Maison Chanel dates back to the 1700s. The 75-acre property in Point Capi Parish includes four houses, among other structures, historically researched gardens, furnishings, and objects accurate to the period. The sellers, Dr. Jack and Pat Holden from Baton Rouge, bought the properties back in 1974 and restored them. The new owners, Sam and Nori Lee from the West Coast, plan on making it a living museum with an educational component.
tornadoes touched down in Metro New Orleans Tuesday night, causing a trail of destruction and one death. It appears the winds from the much larger twister were stronger than any hurricane to ever hit the area. It's doubtful anyone in St. Bernard Parish would argue. Andre Morrow has a recap and checks in with state climatologist Barry Kime about it. Recordings of the massive tornado from viewers who watched it began to pop up all over YouTube and social media and local TV. This video from Preston Trahan and WGNO TV. And this. Okay. It's right now. Right now. It's okay. Oh my God. She's, it's passing. You're passing. You're passing. Oh, You're so through. Good. You're through. You're through You're, it. Are man. you okay? You're safe? You're okay? Okay, you're through. It just passed. It just a passed. couple on the phone with a friend who was directly in the tornado's path, staying with her. They could see it being miles away. Being in the middle of it, the friend saw only chaos. And then veteran meteorologist Margaret Orr from WDSU-TV was on live as it unfolded. Folks, this is something I hoped I would never see. A tornado of this type is rare in South Louisiana. An EF3, capable of producing winds from 158 to 206 miles per hour. And in minutes, leaving stunned families reacting in the aftermath. Houses demolished, their world turned upside down for many again. As it happened, state climatologist Barry Keim was driving from Baton Rouge to New Orleans for meetings with weather researchers. But to see something like this in New Orleans and the type, uh, did, did, that, did that signal anything to you? Well, it is, it is certainly unusual for South Louisiana to get a tornado like this. Uh, Louisiana is getting more and more tornadoes, however, you know, up in, in uh, you know, the northern portion of the state. In fact, the whole corridor along I-20 from, from Dallas all the way across over to, to Atlanta, uh, that's, that seems to be developing almost like the, the new tornado alley. And, and you know, the center of gravity is sort of shifting from the Great Plains more into, into the southeastern United States. Uh, but they, they generally stay north of us, you know, here down, down in New Orleans and Baton Rouge and so on. Uh, so, you know, get, getting a tornado of this magnitude is, is certainly unusual, although it does happen. And, you know, we, we had one just a few years ago that ripped its way across New Orleans, uh, over in New Orleans East. So it's certainly not unprecedented, but, it, but it's not a common occurrence for sure. Is it possibly a, a, a sign that, well, there, there are more of these that uh, could be to come, and this is more of what you might expect as something that could become more of the norm. This certainly could be a sign of climate change. I mean, we really don't know the answer to that. No, and no single event uh, really tells you very much about climate change. Right. However, uh, you know, the, the unusual couple of years we've had in, in uh, South Louisiana has really been crazy. And it, it's certainly raising some suspicions about you know, what, what may be happening. Uh, you know, between the heavy rainfall Falls, uh, you know, th throw a tornado in here like this, and the, you know the, the crazy hurricane seasons we had over the last two seasons. Uh, it's a real head scratcher. I mean, the big question is: Is this just dumb luck, uh, or or is this something meaningful? Um, you know, I would say we, we don't quite know the answer to that quite yet. But uh, you know, we're certainly watching it, and we'll see how the weather continues to behave and and see you know what kind of patterns continue to develop. But but there there's definitely something unusual happening right now. Good to see you, and thanks so yeah, much. Likewise, hey, take care of yourself. We'll see you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye now. Help for people who suffered losses from tornadoes is now another item on a long list for Senator Bill Cassidy and other state leaders in Washington. This week, Cassidy announced $3 billion in hurricane relief from housing and urban development is on the way to Louisiana. An additional $450 million of that will go to Hurricane Laura victims and another $1.27 billion for those impacted by Hurricane Ida. At his weekly briefing, Andre Moro asked him if any relief was coming for gas prices, oil, and even oil production in the Gulf of Mexico. Everyone in Louisiana knows, probably more than any other state, of that kind of linkage between energy, the economy of a, fam of a family and of our country, uh, geopolitics, and now climate. And so we've engaged directly with the administration, with, with high-ranking officials within the administration, how can we move forward? We in Louisiana are concerned about climate. We're the ones losing all our coastline. But we also recognize that you can 
produce oil and gas and offset the carbon in a way which creates jobs for Americans, which lowers the price at the pump and gives us more gas to ship overseas. Your direct question, have there been conversations? Absolutely. I had two different conversations with high-ranking officials last week, and then my staff had another staff-level conversation. I'm also speaking with senators, both Democratic and Republican, about how we can get this moving. We've got to help Russia become free of Russian, excuse me, Europe become free of Russian energy. We've got to help lower the price at the pump for us here. And I want to put more folks in Louisiana in good paying jobs working in the outer continental shelf and elsewhere. That's the goal of our policy. We are pursuing it vigorously. On my website, cassidy.senate.gov backslash reset is our um, uh, guidelines that would govern this issue. Taking care of those four things in the nexus um, and also describing what we call Operation Warp Speed. The ability to harmonize different regulations. You still take care of the environment, but you're able to permit and, and produce faster, both for our sake in the United States as well as overseas. As regards feeling good, um, the administration is talking to us. Uh, they understand they've got to increase production. They want to they want to take care of the climate. So do I. And we've given a starting point for these discussions. The fact that after I spoke to the high ranking official, five different top level staff called my office for further conversation tells me, well, that's just a good sign. Uh, now, if you ask me that question in a week and two and three, Andre, hopefully my answer continues to be even stronger, better sign, better sign and better sign. Not a guarantee, but our world, our country and Europe have got to get off of Russian energy. We have a plan to do so. I'm hoping the administration will work with us. Louisiana is one of the world's top destinations for motion picture and television production, but most of that is based in New Orleans and some in Baton Rouge. Both are seeing growth now, and Shreveport is also getting back into the act. Andre Morrow updates the latest on Hollywood South. Disney Plus's National Treasure television series is filming in Baton Rouge, and directors are looking for fully vaccinated and boosted extras in the area. The Caballero Casting Company is hiring people of all ages to work in some of the capital city's most historic spots. The company says adult extras are paid $126 for a 12-hour shift and minors $80. But the TV series, which is an expansion of the film franchise, isn't just shooting on location in Baton Rouge, it's set in Baton Rouge. As the storyline goes, the capital city is where a lost Pan American treasure is thought to be buried. Emerging actress Lisette Alexis stars, along with Academy Award winner Catherine Zeta-Jones, who brings big star power. She's running around Baton Rouge right now. They're filming at multiple locations throughout the city. If you go to downtown last week or week before and throughout the city, you're seeing these trucks all over the yes. place in the parking lot. They're over at Celtic uh, on stages. They'll be here through June filming. And how did they choose Baton Rouge as the place where there's some treasure buried? It's just a great place, okay. you know. Louisiana is <laughs> just a great place to work, to, to do business. We've created a, 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 an incentive program that's reliable that's well known throughout the entire world and uh, we have great crew bases we have a great support network here all of that pitch from Louisiana Entertainment Executive Director Chris Stelly is true but still it's a big deal for Baton Rouge and possibly a first okay so going way back yeah. hush hush sweet Charlotte hush hush they were in in Louisiana and near Baton Rouge where they refer to Baton Rouge yes. Uh, Miss Jane Pittman yes. referred to Baton Rouge, yes. but yes. not anything quite like this. Not anything that's going to feature Baton Rouge as a character in yeah. over the course of eight eight episodes. Uh, Anytime you spend a considerable amount of time in an area, whether it's you know a four month production cycle or for scripted episodics, you might get 10, 11 months out of the year spent in a community. You become part of that community, and so shows like NCIS New Orleans, which was till today has been the longest running series that we've had with seven seasons. Yeah. They've become part of the community. Baton Rouge and especially New Orleans are rebounding from COVID setbacks with film and TV projects happening or in the works. Expansion is the talk around the Big Easy. 
New Orleans native Anthony Mackie, Marvel's newest Captain America, bought 20 acres in New Orleans East with plans for a new film studio off the I-10 Service Road and Reed Boulevard. Mayor LaToya Cantrell tweeted, New Orleans East is making a comeback. Bam! Any time anyone talks and is considering building in the state of Louisiana is a great thing for us because it, it proves that this industry has set down some roots, has provided greater opportunities for further investment today and tomorrow. Which brings us to Shreveport. Drew Mouton is the Director of Economic Development and has assembled a team ready to make things happen. Uh, knowing that Shreveport has this history of at one point being the single most active uh, non-California film location in the country, uh, sort of 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10 in that area, era, it has a lot of, the industry has a lot of emotional resonance for the community, uh, but it had died off. So we sat down and really said, is this an industry where we should be playing? Should, should we invest into this and does it make sense? And came up with a couple reasons, maybe three strong reasons why Shreveport can compete in that space. And then we started putting the pieces in place to, to try to rebuild it again. Mouton says there are three things going for the city. You can make a movie here that looks like it's anywhere. We've doubled for New York, for, uh, shoot, I don't even know, the country, all kinds of different things. We've blown up the White House up here. You know, uh, it has that. It's been called the nation's back lot. Um, it's got some, it's got this thing that, that I think of as production efficiency. But one of the... One of the sort of tricky benefits of living in this 136 square mile town, uh, which is about the size of Cincinnati or Detroit, but has about 30 percent, 25 percent of the population, means that you can really get anywhere in about five minutes. And so the production crews would tell us, you know, there's a magic thing that happens here. We can set up, we can shoot, we can break down, we can move, we can set up and shoot and break down. We can do this three times a day. And there are very few places where we can get that much production in a given day. Uh, and then the third thing was that we had some assets up here that are really interesting. We have one of only two purpose-built studios in the state. The others are conversions. Uh, we have uh, one of the largest wave tanks up here. Um, and, and we have this history of doing really big production work. For SWI, I'm Andre Morrow. student at Thrive Academy is taking hardship and turning it into passion. Corin Gray is in the process of creating her own skincare line as just a senior in high school. She's SGA president and a young entrepreneur with a bright future ahead of her. But her journey to get here was a difficult one. Tonight, I'm introducing you to our first LPB Louisiana Young Hero of 2022. Dimly lighted, mysteriously what makes a hero? For Batman, it's his genius. But for Corin Gray, a senior at Thrive Academy, the answer is more complex. I think a hero is someone who makes the most out of a bad situation. And instead of doing negative that goes into the situation, they go forth with positive to bring hope to other people. Gray's journey to heroism was a difficult one. At a young age, she was bounced from house to house, from parent to parent. Both homes weren't suitable for children. It's been really difficult for me. I've been from home to home, and recently, since last May, I was homeless for six months until my birthday. So it's been, it's been rough, a rough 18 years. For most of her life, Gray was abused physically and mentally by family members. The abuse at one point was so bad that she ran away from home. It was a decision I wanted to make at the time, but ultimately it wasn't up to me because I wasn't 18, so I had to go back and live with my mother. The next day, I ended up with, we didn't have a home after that. On the outside, it was clear something wasn't right. Just physical appearance, walking around, shoulder slumped walking around, head looking to the ground. Uh, when you speak to her, she wouldn't look in you in the eye and she wouldn't project her voice. Um, so that kind of let me know that she didn't really see herself as valuable. Uh, she didn't think her voice mattered. Uh, she didn't think she deserved to be heard. So just those were my interpretations from just the physicality. And then when we began to speak, um, she was really forward with sharing. Kadra Ellis is a teacher at Thrive Academy where Gray goes to school. 
The two bonded over time, and Ellis learned about Gray's home life. And she reached out to me and mentioned about her not being able to go home or not being comfortable going home, and basically asked, like, what can I do? And so I made some phone calls and reached out to some of our counselors here, and then they took it from there. Um, and next thing I know, you know, two weeks later, she's a different person. That's when the real transformation began. Gray was officially moved out of her abusive home and placed with a foster mother, Connie Orr. She started to come out of her shell and ran for SGA president. She joined after-school clubs and developed an interest in graphic design. It was actually in the moment kind of thing where I just was like, okay, I'll see if I can do it, and I did. So it's another one of the situations where I didn't expect for something good to happen, and it did. So that's, I'm always shocked when good things happen. He's the founder and the CEO of Nabi Lotus Cosmetics. Let's hear it up for Corinne. But most importantly, she became a young entrepreneur. Through the organization, Gray created her own skincare line My called Nabi Lotus. Gray, the I name stands for rebirth CEO and beauty. It's taken me a while because over the years I realized it's something I wanted to do, but I never really think I, I never really thought I could make it into something feasible to sell. So the first one, I call it the butterfly wash or the Nabi wash. Through this project, Gray conquered her fear of public speaking. She inspired her classmates to take a leap of faith, but more importantly, she gained confidence in herself. Shoulders back, looking you in the eye. Um, when she speaks, she speaks with more confidence. And it wasn't, um, it wasn't a drastic change. It was minimal at first, but it kind of grew over time. Gray's newfound strength is inspiring. That's why when nominations began for LPB's Louisiana Young Heroes, she was a no-brainer. I feel very excited because I usually, I usually set my expectations way lower. So I, that's why I was such a shock because I, I think there's so many more people doing so much more things by actually getting nominated for it and actually getting it. It made me realize that. What I do is something big. The things I do aren't just minimal. It actually inspires people. It's been a long journey, and not an easy one. But by Gray's definition, a hero overcomes adversity, makes the best of a bad situation, and spreads positivity. In 2022, she has surely done that. Do you think you're a hero? Before, I thought like I could never get the title of a hero because I I never felt like I've done anything big enough to be a hero, so now I see it and I think I am. Gray has been accepted into college already. She'll be attending University of Louisiana at Lafayette, majoring in graphic design. LPB's Louisiana Young Heroes program is being presented this year with generous support of Amera Health, Caritas, Louisiana, East Baton Rouge Parish Library, the U.S. Army Baton Rouge Recruiting Battalion, Demco, and Hotel Indigo. You can find more information at lpb.org slash heroes. And that's our show for this week. Remember, you can watch anything LPB anytime, wherever you are, with our LPB PBS app. You can catch LPB news and public affairs shows, as well as other Louisiana programs you've come to enjoy over the years. And please like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. For everyone at Louisiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Kara St. Cyr. Until next time, that's the state we're in.
Entergy is proud to support programming on LPB and greener practices that preserve Louisiana. The goal of our environmental and sustainability initiatives really is to ensure that our kids and future generations can be left with a cleaner planet. Additional support provided by the Fred B. and Ruth B. Ziegler Foundation and the Ziegler Art Museum located in Jennings City Hall. The museum focuses on emerging Louisiana artists and is an historical and cultural center for Southwest Louisiana. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting with support from viewers like you.